Hi, I'm Non from My Authentic Style, and this channel is dedicated to helping you find your authentic style. In this video, I'll be discussing the Kibi dramatic image identity, specifically the body type, the style profile, and I'll also share a sample wardrobe and shopping guide for this body type. This video assumes that you've taken the Kibi test and you've determined your type to be dramatic. If you haven't, I suggest you go back a few videos to where I shared the Kibi test, as well as the video following that where I go through the answers. If your answers came out as mostly A, then you are a Kibi dramatic. On the yin and yang scale, which the Kibi test or body typing system aims to determine, the dramatic is the most yang, meaning it is about sharpness, angularity, and vertical. For this discussion, I'll be using women that have been classified as Kibi dramatic and that fall within the general categorizations and characteristics of this type. But with that said, every dramatic woman will look slightly different. What's important to hold on to is the overall dominance of sharp yang and a long vertical line that makes the kibi dramatic. Now let's discuss the dramatic body type. Height. Dramatics will be moderate to tall, usually five foot five and over. These women have a long vertical line, so they appear tall and most often are. With that said, there is no lower limit. So technically these women could be shorter. However, these women will not be petite. Body type. The dramatic body type is straight and angular and may tend to long and sleek musculature. These women have very little flesh on their bones, regardless of weight, typically. They usually have long legs and arms, and they are narrow in width. Bone structure. The dramatic bone structure is angular with sharp edges. They usually have square shoulders, which may be narrow. Their hands and feet are usually long and narrow. Facial bones are sharp or prominent often seen in the nose, jawline, and cheekbones. Sometimes the bone structure can be called delicate because of the sharpness, but this isn't really a, a word that works within the dramatic body type because of the elongation. The minute that you add that length, the structure stops being delicate, at least in terms of kibi. So a more useful or accurate description would be sleek, as opposed to delicate. The Kibi dramatic is characterized by a dominant sharp angularity. Their facial features are made up of straight, sleek lines. They may have almond eyes, narrow, thin or straight lips, taut skin, especially around the cheek and jaw areas. These features may or may not be true for every dramatic woman, but what holds is a general chiseled face structure, a sharpness and angularity, and a face that can generally be described as striking. Coloring. Any coloring is possible from warm to cool tones, high contrast or more blended coloring, but a dramatic is usually distinct they can be very fair, very fiery, very vivid, very dark. And note here that a lot of Kibi language is not very inclusive. I think he worked within a very particular part of the population. So I'll do my best to stretch that out without losing the essence and the meaning of what he was trying to describe. But the coloring of a dramatic should be very bold, I would say, or striking in some way, their features will be striking and any coloring is possible. If overweight, heaviness usually congregates around the hip and upper thigh area, as opposed to the upper torso. Now in these three images, Kira Knightley looks amazing and is in no way overweight. 
These pictures do, however, show her at slightly different weight points, and it's interesting to discuss within the context of a dramatic body type how that weight is distributed. What I see most importantly is that her frame remains narrow. So regardless of weight gain, which again is very slight across these three pictures, she remains very narrow to me and her stomach remains fairly flat. Where she does pick up a bit of weight is as stated in her upper thigh area. So this can be an interesting way to gauge whether this is your body type or not based on how your body reacts to picking up weight. A dramatic will not have an hourglass figure, be petite or extremely small in stature, have short or fleshy arms or legs, be perfectly symmetrical, have lush, full facial features, meaning round eyes, fleshy cheeks, full lips, generally speaking, again. And they will not have a broad or blunt bone structure or facial bones. Pictured here are some dramatic celebrities. Notice the elongation and the narrow silhouette. If we had to represent them in a quick stick figure drawing, I would draw a long, thin line. And that is something to keep in mind with the Kibi Dramatic. That is how they are best represented. And here is a list of Kibi verified celebrities. Now let's discuss Kibi Dramatic lines. The key to the dramatic style profile is the shape. Dramatics must keep the shape sharp and geometric. Think of triangles, rectangles, or anything sculpted, sleek, and elongated with crisp, sharp edges. Likewise, the lines of the silhouette should be kept long and straight. Elongated draping that is sleek is the dramatics version of a soft line. Here, notice how Tilda looks amazing in these long, sharp lines. I see the triangles in the collar of her coat. I see the sharp edging of that same coat. I see the long line of the pants and everything works beautifully together. The colors also work well between the sharp contrast of the white and the black of the top and bottom, but also the dark colors of the coat and the pants creating this long head to toe kind of ensemble. She looks amazing here. Avoid soft flowing lines as these will age you. Avoid unconstructed silhouettes as they will look sloppy on you. Broken or horizontal lines are not elegant enough for you. In this image to the right, notice just how disoriented Tilda looks. That shirt is too floppy. It doesn't have structure and it doesn't support her long vertical and her bone structure. It looks very inharmonious with her. Fabrics. The dramatic should opt for fabrics that hold a defined shape. These will support the strong structure of this body type. Moderate to heavyweight fabrics are best with a matte finish and smooth surface. Occasionally, lightweight fabrics can work if they are extra structured in the design. Avoid overly sheer lightweight fabrics that float, such as in this image to the right. There is just too much fabric going on for Tilda's more narrow silhouette. Her body is lost to me and she feels lost in this outfit. It's cool if we were going for something editorial, but in terms of what works to support her lines and her structure, this dress doesn't have any of that. It doesn't have enough structure. It doesn't have, it's not fitted enough and it's kind of just flying over her. Also avoid overly clingy fabrics as they tend to be unsophisticated on you. But as stated before, clingy fabrics can work for dramatics 
if there is some extra structure in the design. Avoid extremely rough and thick textures as they conflict against the more sleek structure of this body type. Details. Details should always be clean and minimal to complement your sculpted, chiseled look. They should focus on bold, sweeping geometrics, angular shapes, and sharp edges. Do include square, sharp shoulders. Shoulder pads are a great essential for this body type. Include clean, angular necklines, such as plunging v-necks, skinny turtlenecks, slashed collars, etc. Really include anything tailored, crisp cuffs, sharp pleats, sharp lapels, etc. Separates. Your look does not include an obvious use of separates. So keep individual pieces blending together in an artful way for elegance. Remember that the dramatic is striving for a head to toe ensemble effect and not a mix and match approach. Avoid obviously separate, uncohesive uses of color and pattern. The images to the right create a sort of very distinct break in each individual piece, whereas the images to the left, the items play well together and they're cohesive. And Tilda looks better and more elegant in the images to the right. Color. Always think of head to toe with your color schemes. The deepest colors that complement your coloring are best. Dark neutrals are especially effective and color combinations should be bold but elegant. Combining bright shades with dark shades achieves this with ease. Pastels can be stunning if you create an entire ensemble. And all monochromatic color screens are excellent. Prints. Prints should be bold and geometric. Think of stripes, zigzags, asymmetrics, and irregular shapes. Bold color combinations and high contrast blends work best. Think Picasso and strive for a contemporary feeling. While some of these styles are not necessarily the best, looking particularly at this dress third from the left, it's a little too flowy and lightweight for Tilda, but all of these patterns look great on her. Avoid anything rounded, swirled, or overly draped. Anything too delicate or intricate or overly fragile. Ornateness translates into fussy on you. Avoid small fussy detail. Avoid overly ornate or intricate detail. Think of ruffles, lacy frills, feathers, tucks and gathers, etc. In these pictures, it's amazing how separate they are from Tilda. All of this extra detail is in fact very fussy. I want to take most of this off on her. And that'll be the effect of the dramatic in these kind of opposing styles. In this first look the to the left, I don't like that detail under the dress, but I'm drawn to it. The fit and shape of this dress is also not great on her. It's The fabric weight is great because it's a structured fabric, but the silhouette of the dress doesn't suit her. And the shorter length sleeves are also not great. In the second look, that apron-like skirt has all those ruffles going down and it's too fussy again on her, as well as that sudden break between the purple skirt and the white shirt all just creates a lack of harmony. In the third look again, that red bow, I think, next to her face is odd and it just stands out. I don't like the pattern of the round, very symmetrical type circles of the maroon dress as well as the parts sticking out by her waist it's all just not harmonious with tilda and what looks best on her and that last look has a little bit too much going on between the stars and the scarf and this tweed skirt or woolen skirt 
all of these patterns and design elements don't work for the dramatic. Avoid overly unconstructed detail, like sloppy necklines, shapeless or oversized silhouettes, etc. Here, Tola doesn't look awful, like completely terrible, because these looks generally work with her long vertical, they honor her long vertical. So the second dress to the left is one solid color that looks great on her as well as a dress to the right of that where it's just all black. I see how tall she is and that harmony with her long vertical line gives it some points and makes it work some way. But the fabrics are a bit too light in some of the cases or sometimes the draping is too excessive and there's a general lack of shape that the dramatic needs. So these looks just don't work on her. The very first look has great shape, meaning the fabric is stiff enough to hold its own shape, but the actual silhouette of the skirt and bottom doesn't give Tilda a great shape. So she looks, she looks much older than she is and these looks aren't her best. Avoid multicolor splashes and a mix and match approach to color. Avoid watercolor print, florals, soft swirls, and overly cute or animated styles. Avoid small symmetrical prints. In these looks, again, these are not Tilda's best. Specifically, the use of color and pattern in these looks is a bit jarring on her. There's too much going on in most of them. The watercolor effect is too delicate for somebody with this sleek of a bone structure and a general essence. The middle look, I think, is by far the most separate from her. There's a lot going on. It's not just the colors used, although that is, there's too many soft, bright colors and the pattern is a little splotchy, but also the general shape of the dress, all those swirls, all that volume just widens Tilda's silhouette in a way that doesn't work with her. To be fair, I'm not sure who that dress would look great on, but generally somebody with more of a, a roundedness within their own features. It's, it's a tough dress to pull off, <laughs> but it's especially difficult for somebody with as much angularity and sharpness as Tilda does. And then the last look, that polka dot type pattern is too regulated, too um, symmetrical and too traditional. It, it leans very classic and it just does nothing for Tilda's dramatic body type and essence. Now let's discuss Kibi dramatic clothes. It's important to note here that Kibi has repeatedly said that clothing doesn't belong to a specific type. Rather that it's how you put a piece into an entire outfit that makes it appropriate and or inappropriate for that type. This is a sample wardrobe that I've created that I feel would be a useful shopping guide for anybody who is a dramatic type. And what's important to note here is the lines and the silhouettes of the clothes. So if you train yourself to understand that, you'll be able to look for that when you do buy any type of clothing. Let's start with lingerie. Some of these are recommendations from Kibi and some of them are my own additions but we'll discuss them all as we go through. So for me, when I think dramatic, I think of a long vertical line from top to bottom, meaning, and also a monochromatic scheme. So you can see this in these pieces. This first one is one piece from top to bottom, and that's as long as you can get with lingerie. And the top one also features sharp Vs in the bodice as most dramatics will have a smaller bust line, but not always. And there's a solidity and a sort of, a, but also a thinness to these pieces, which I thought worked with the dramatic body type. And the third image I added some, I added a picture of somebody with slightly more bust and a little more curve to their frame because the dramatic body type 
while long and lean can look slightly different. For swimsuits, I focused on sharp v-necks, so there's that sharpness and angularity, as well as a solid color from top to bottom and a vivid color because dramatic styling is bold and, well, dramatic. In this last image, that contrast of black and white, that highly contrasted color combination is a great way to tie in dramatic elements to a piece, as well as that one shoulder or one arm detail, which gives it an asymmetric feel, which again is great for dramatics. Shorts. With shorts, I focused on long lines, sharp edging, and a sort of sleekness and a narrowness in the silhouette. With the long shorts, it's also important to think in terms of your long vertical from head to toe. So this might work on some dramatics. On some people, it might cut them off weirdly horizontally, so I would, in fact, wear a shirt that is the same color as the shorts so that there is a longer vertical preserved. Um, but also this contrast works great because high contrast is a dramatic element. The second shorts have that vivid red color and the, the lines are very sleek and long. And the third pair has a shorter length, which focuses on the long legs that typically a dramatic will have. So again, preserving that long vertical by making the garment itself shorter. Casual tops. Here, the focus is on solid color, long vertical. So the turtleneck elongates the length of uh, the top, which works great with dramatics. And the first top has sharp V neckline. And all of these have a certain crispness and a sharpness to them that is important for harmony with that body type. Yes, this is casual, but it still has an air of being put together and being sleek and dramatic should always be mindful of that. For the formal tops, I focused on, again, the sharp V-necks and heavier fabrics, stiffer fabrics that hold their shape. And this third top, the black one, the black blouse that is more fitted and slightly more forgiving in terms of being clingy is still okay because it has a bit of detail to that structuring. So it doesn't have to always be a fitted, crisp, tuxedo-like shirt. It can be something that is clingy knitwear, but the detailing makes it fit for a dramatic. It's important to remember that blouses should be tailored and sleek and avoid very flouncy or frilly blouses or oversized and shapeless blouses. For sweaters, again, clingy fabrics can work if they have some detailing, but focus on the long turtleneck to elongate that vertical line. And I like this sort of dress because it's long, so that vertical line is preserved, but it's also narrow. So it's kind of just perfectly what the dramatic represents. Pants should always be straight and man-tailored. Deep pleats are a good touch, as is a long hem, which gently breaks at the shoe. Avoid drapey and clingy pants that taper at the ankle. That is more of a style for petite types like a gamine. Yours should be long all the way to the toe for a seamless elongated silhouette. Avoid oversized and baggy shapes. Jeans. Here again, think long, thin, and long enough to break at the shoe and not at the ankle. Jackets should always be tailored and sculpted with very defined shoulders. Generally speaking, they should be long, ending at the mid-thigh area, although a very sleek Italian style might be cropped. If you are going to go for a crop style, I would recommend pants of the same coloring, which would extend that long vertical line. Double-breasted could also be a great choice. 
Avoid overly flouncy jackets with peplums, nipped in waists, and fussy touches such as shoulder tucks, ornate buttons, or tapered sleeves. Overly shapeless or boxy jackets should also be avoided. Coats. Notice the heavy fabric, but the smooth texture of these jackets. You don't want anything too heavily textured or rough in texture for a sleek body type such as a dramatic, but the shape should always be elongated and the, the shapes should be sharp and the edges should also be very crisp. Skirts should be straight and long. Notice again how the recommendations for this body type are in alignment with how this body type itself is described. The dramatic is straight and long, so it makes sense that the items described to suit them best would also be straight and long. Minimum length can be recommends two inches below the knee, and there is no maximum length. You can wear as long a skirt as you want or as long a bottom or dress as you want because you have that long vertical. Here, notice how these skirts are sharp and angular and sleek in the way that they fit. Avoid full skirts, gathered waists, draped and shirt shapes. Anything that would widen your silhouette is not the best for this body type. Dresses. Dresses should be elongated and sleek and the more tailored, the better. Again, sharp shoulders are essential should the dress be having shoulders. Anything that is very narrow and with a narrow silhouette is amazing for this body type. Waist emphasis is reserved for use with very wide geometric belts. Dropped waists and no waist styles are elegant when the shape is kept narrow. Avoid all flouncy styles with flowing silhouettes, fitted waists and fussy necklines. Avoid shapeless and unconstructed styles. For evening wear, the dramatic should focus on geometric shapes, elongated vertical lines, hard metallic fabrics, smooth fabrics, sculpted trim, angular necklines, shoulder emphasis, slinky sheaths, tailored dinner suits, long gowns with sharp shoulders, halter necklines and jackets evening pants with tailored jackets. Again, the focus is on long sleek lines and a general sharpness in all of the detailing. Now let's discuss accessories. In general, all accessories should be crisp, sharply tailored and angular with geometric shapes. Keep everything sleek and contemporary in feeling. Bags. Bags should be crisp and geometric. Angular envelopes, clutches, or structured briefcases are excellent choices. Avoid small rounded shapes. Avoid soft, supple leather or fabric. Avoid ornamentation or luxurious detail. Avoid any type of bag that doesn't keep its own shape. Shoes. Shoes should be tailored and angular high straight heels, crisp soles, and elegantly tapered toes. Avoid delicate feminine styles. Avoid any ornamentation. Jewelry. Jewelry should always be sleek and elegant with an emphasis on bold modern shapes. Think sharp pieces are a good choice as are avant-garde works of art. Asymmetrical shapes work well and pieces should be large, but not overly bulky. Avoid delicate antique jewelry or extra glitzy costume jewelry. Avoid heavy, chunky, quote unquote, ethnic pieces. Avoid small symmetrical pieces. Hats. Hats should be crisp and geometric and man tailored with wide brims and sharp edges. Belts should be bold and wide. Leather should be stiff and shaped. Metal belts will be sculptured and quite large. And buckles should always be geometric or asymmetric. Hip belts for dropped waists are best. 
Dramatic hair. Hair should always be sleek and sculpted, usually swept off the face to emphasize your chiseled bone structure. The shape is always geometric and the color should be vivid and distinct regardless of the hue and or intensity. Avoid overly soft, coiffed or wispy hair. This ages you. Avoid soft hair hanging in or covering your face, such as fluffy bangs or feathery sides. That Avoid trying to soften your hair color. Your color is best when it's bold and vibrant. Avoid highlights as this mutes the intensity of the color and results in a washed out look. Notice tilde in the top and the bottom section of this image. Up top, her hair is sleek and sculpted and she looks amazing. In the bottom picture, it's wispy and curled and it just looks very off and aging on her. Dramatic makeup is bold and precise. Makeup should emphasize your angles and chiseled features. A high contrast look is best with smoky eyes, contoured cheeks and deep lips played against a background of neutral skin. Avoid an overly soft or watercolor effect as this will be unsophisticated and aging on you. And avoid the no makeup makeup look as this looks undone and not sleek enough. I can see this at play on Jordan's face to the left. In the top image, she looks absolutely stunning. I love that lip color on her. It's bold, it's vivid, it's vibrant, and it really just brings all her features to life. In the picture beneath it, her lip color is more neutral, and this is leaning more towards that no makeup makeup. And it looks rather underwhelming on her. It's not that she doesn't look beautiful. She's a beautiful woman and she'll always look beautiful, but there's something missing, especially when I can compare them side by side. That vividness and boldness of the color is enough to really put that uh, aspect of the dramatic principle to the front and showcase just how important it is for women of that body type to lean into bold styling within every aspect of their look, including their makeup. And with that, I hope this video has helped you to be able to answer the question, are you a dramatic? If you enjoyed the third section of this video where I gave you a dramatic sample wardrobe with options for different parts of your wardrobe, then you can download that for free. I am actively starting to build up my email list. So all I ask in return is your name and email address, and you can find that resource in your inbox. I'll leave the link to it in the description box below. And this is the first time I'm doing something of this kind. So if somebody does click on the link to download it, please let me know if it uh, comes to you without a hitch. I would be very grateful for that feedback. Thank you so much for watching till the end. I hope this video was helpful to you. If you like the content that I'm creating, or if you want to discuss anything I touched on in the video, please do so. Leave me a comment. Also, like the video and of course, subscribe and turn on those notifications. I'll see you on the next one.